So let us draw a sinusoid with its argument and the amplitude. So I put argument theta in x axis and amplitude in y axis and the amplitude of this particular wave is 1. So the mathematical expression will be y cosine theta. Now if I want to represent this, express this uh, sinusoid in, term, in the polar form, then we can express it in polar form. So where the amplitude will be on the radius, uh, on the perimeter of the circle and the face angle is in this direction. So this is my real axis and this is the imaginary axis. So the face angle we go this way. So this is my face angle or just to use the opposite sign. So this is my face angle. So this is the face angle theta and the radial distance is the amplitude. So the radial distance So we apply the radial distance for amplitude and this is my face angle or phasor. So we can express this very same sinusoid in phasor form and if we express this, this very same expression will be the amplitude 1 and the angle theta. <laughs> so now this is called the polar form of the sinusoid. So this is the polar form or phasor form. Polar form or phasor form. So the, we can also convert this phasor form into rectangular form. So a rectangular form will be, so if I draw this clearly, so we do have this amplitude, I can break this amplitude in terms of the angle theta. So this will be in real axis, we have this value is r, value is 1, so this will be 1 cosine theta, and this height will be sine theta. So you can write it like this is my real axis, and here is my imaginary axis. So you can write it like cosine theta plus j sine theta. <coughs> We use J in engineering. In mathematics, they use I. So here we use J. So here the sine theta that's basically was Y cosine theta. The sinusoid so as cos cosine theta or Y cosine phasor angle. So you can write it like in the polar form like this. And then also this is in rectangular form or Cartesian form. Rectangular form or Cartesian form. So simply we can assume this Cartesian form can be written like x plus j y. So in generally we can write it like x plus j y and in polar form it will be like this. So if I 
write down the relation between Cartesian and polar, we'll get x equal to r times cosine theta and y equal to r sine theta. Or we also can write r equal to x square plus y square and theta equal to tan inverse y over x. So we can express or solve any electrical circuit, AC electrical circuit in complex form, in complex mode because the AC circuits in as for AC circuits it is not enough to deal with the magnitude like in DC circuit we did. In DC circuit we only consider the magnitude of voltage or current and we solve the circuit but for AC magnitude is not enough we also know the phase angle the phase angle of the system so for AC circuit we have to deal with both the magnitude and the phase angle or phasor. So we use the phasor form or rectangular form for solving AC circuits. Now the question is why we are not considering frequency. So in AC circuit like say we a sinusoid could have like a voltage sinusoid could have a cosine omega t plus phi so uh, here we have pay, uh, frequency and phase angle and amplitude amplitude so voltage got an amplitude a frequency and a phase angle so for sinusoid we have three things basically amplitude and then frequency and phase. But we only consider uh, amplitude and phase. We don't consider frequency because the frequency doesn't sense uh, while is used in a circuit so frequency always constant so let us give an example so as we learned in DC that for resistor this is the voltage and current in resistor so we learned that V equal to I times R. Now if we assume that I is a sinusoid like I magnitude cosine omega t plus phi, then the voltage will be I m times cosine omega t plus phi times R. Or you can write I M R cosine omega t plus phi. So here we see the frequency of current is same to the frequency of voltage. And likewise, if we apply, think about inductor and try to find the voltage. And the inductor current is I L. So we know V L equal to L T I L over D T. And I assume my I L equal to I M cosine omega T plus phi. We'll get V L equal to L. And derivative of this I am cosine omega t plus phi so L I am omega 
and the derivative of cosine will be negative sine omega t plus phi. So it becomes omega l i m sine omega t plus phi. So here also you see the frequency omega for voltage and the same frequency for the current. Only the difference is the phase angle. Here it is sine, so we can represent in terms of cosine omega l i m cosine omega t plus so here we have omega t plus phi so i want to write it in terms of cosine so in terms of cosine let me use this diagram that we have learned earlier so how we can convert uh, replace or express a function a sine function in terms of cosine function so we do have a negative sine omega t and this is cosine omega t this is sine omega t negative cosine omega t now i wanted to convert negative sine to cosine so negative sine over here and i need to write in terms of uh, cosine so if you write in terms of cosine you basically it's two or you can simply write it omega t plus phi so if i go this way this angle will be negative theta and this angle is positive positive theta so negative sine omega t plus phi will be somewhere here So if you write it this way, so you have to write 90 degree plus phi. So it will be cosine phi over 2 plus phi. Uh, what we can see from here, the frequency is not changing. Only the phase angle, before the phase angle was phi, now it was uh, pi over 2 plus phi 90 degrees plus phi is the voltage so only the amplitude got changed here the amplitude the current amplitude was i m the voltage amplitude omega l i m and the phase angle got changed in this case the amplitude and phase angle is affecting so if we apply ohm's law or some other law you know we will be uh, finding or we will be observing only there is change in amplitude and in phase but not in the frequency that's why it is enough to solve solve only for two parameters one is the magnitude and phase angle so in DC we only solve for magnitude but for AC we need to solve for amplitude and phase angle and we need to deal with them at the same time so we need to find amplitude and phase angle at the same time so if we apply Ohm's law or Kashoff's law so we always deal with the amplitude and phase angle while we solving for voltage and current as we are we need to solve we need to take care of both amplitude and phase angle so we prefer solving our system in complex mode complex mode and in complex mode as i say here we got two things and is voltage and phase angle so in complex mode we also have uh, two two way to express them one is the polar form or phasor form and another is the rectangular form so there are some advantages of using for each form so in complex numbers and phasor so a phasor is a complex number that represents the magnitude and angle of a sinusoid like z equal to x plus i y j y it's a complex number that has a real part and imaginary part 
so and this form is called rectangular or cartesian form and this is the polar form or phasor form so now the relationship between the phasor form and rectangular form how we can convert from rectangular to the phasor so we can get the argument amplitude by taking x square plus y square of x square root and the phase angle by taking tan inverse y over x and similarly if you want to get x component from polar form we can find r cosine theta and y component will be r sine theta now why we we need to we need to learn both polar form and rectangular form because sometimes rectangular form is convenient for example if you want to add or subtract two numbers then rectangular form will be easier just let's say we have complex number z z1 z z2 so just you can add z1 plus z2 the whole complex number that real part will be added together and the imaginary part will be added together for subtraction the real part will be subtracted and the imaginary part will be will be subtracted for multiplication we prefer to having the polar form the argument of two uh, complex numbers will be multiplied and the phase angle will be added so be careful the phase angle will be added just if you multiply z1 and z2 then the real uh, argument r1 and r2 will be multiplied and the phase angle theta1 and theta2 will be added similarly if you want to divide z1 over z2 we prefer the polar form polar form will be multiplied the argument will be multiplied directly and the phase angle will be subtracted so you can write r1 over r2 and the phase angle will be theta1 minus theta2 similarly if you want to do a square root a square root then the argument polar form would be good uh, you take the square root of the argument and the phase angle will be one half and if you want to take the inverse of this on over z then the magnitude will be inverse and phase angle will be negative and sometimes we need to know the conjugate of this so conjugate means uh the sign will be altered like the imaginary part sign of the imaginary part will be altered altered like say here we had we had z equal to 1 plus j y now if i take z conjugate z conjugate it will be x minus j y so x minus j y and in polar form we will get the r the amplitude will be same and the phase angle will be negative so be careful always in, in the comp complex form uh, for a complex number the argument can never be negative it will be always positive because argument is measured from using from by, by by taking the formula like this x square plus y square so x and y could be negative but no matter if you take x square and y square that gives always a positive number r so basically if you see some value like if you see anything like this negative negative one angle uh, zero degrees so that is meaning that the, two, the equivalent to this will be one angle plus minus 180 degrees 180 degrees so that means the angle will be 180 but not negative 1 0 so that is equivalent to positive 1 angle 180 degrees sometimes uh, sometimes we might need to replace this negative sign with plus minus 180 degrees now i show you how we can Add complex number using calculators. Uh, 
I, I wanted to show you how to use calculators for solving problems uh, with complex numbers. Showing for Casio FX991MS, if you have uh, some other model, just uh, look at your handbook and find the procedure how to uh, work in complex mode. So at first you have to press the mode button and see you see for two I press two it will go to complex mode. So now computer uh, my calculator is now in complex mode. So we can work handle both complex uh, rectangular and polar using this mode. So if I have a rectangular number like two plus three and I just for uh, to press the imaginary uh, value then you have to press shift and then on i i on the top of engineering so if you put shift plus eng you will get the complex part so 2 plus 3 i is my complex number in rectangular form now if i wanted to if i want to convert in the polar form so you have to press shift again and plus so you see this number will go to r theta form in polar form so just press equal you will get the magnitude is 3.6 now if you want to get the angle so shift equal again you will get the angle is 56 so now you have uh, polar form if you want it to back to the rectangular form so you have to press shift minus so it will go to this form a plus b i form and you see how to get the real part so shift uh, oh sorry you press equal you will get if you press equal you will get the real part 2 and then shift equal you will get the imaginary part 3 the i suffix and you see the small i written here this is the imaginary part so now if i wanted to add this with another value 5 minus 6 i so you will get the value is 7 this is the real part and uh, this is the imaginary part be careful that whenever you get any value by this calculator it directly goes to the rectangular form if you need polar form then you have to convert it like press shift and then polar is polar plus r theta so you go to polar form 7.61 is the magnitude and this is the angle so this is how we can find you can solve or, or do any mathematical uh, war uh, operations using calculator in complex mode thank you